So let's do our last statement. Make sure the current account or the bank account you're reconciling is highlighted. Click reconcile. Once again, three bits of information, the reference, the end in balance and the statement date, and we can ignore the rest of these boxes. So we just completed statement 54. Let's go to our last statement, my short one, that's statement 55. So statement 55, end in balance is this closing balance at the end of the statement and also the end of the period. 148727. 148727. Statement date is once again this last date on the statement but also the last in the period of May, so the 31st of May 2013. So that's in the statement date, we've done the ending balance and the statement reference, let's click OK. The last reconciled amount was minus 15873, which is the closing balance on the statement previous. It's page three minus one five eight seven three plus two seven three is one one four twenty seven. So that's correct. Let's put a green there. Okay, now we've got no transactions at all. That's a first in these videos. We had no transactions at all to bring down, so that means that all three of these transactions aren't on um, aren't on stage. So let's just start at the top and work our way through. So we have a, a BAX payment again, a BAX receipt from a customer, the 30th of the 5th of 273. So let's click save. We don't want to discard our box there. Um, so customer, let's bring up that customer. There's the amount, 273. The date we received the payment was the 30th of the 5th, so 3005 2013. Definitely got the one invoice outstanding, the amount's correct, so let's click pay in full. And the reference, let's put back. Click save. Yes. We then have money paid into the bank. The paying in slip was 500 508. 1873. Okay, and there's a couple of ways you may pay money into the bank and record that in Sage. You may just do it as a direct receipt of a sale. Um, so click receipts, you'd put a 4000 code in, um, pull the information, click save. Or well, you may actually have a petty cash account, which I do in front of me. And what would happen is it's cash sales would go into the petty cash account so once again you click receipt to a 4000 code here the money would go into petty cash and then it, when it was banked you would transfer the money from petty cash to the current account so the having a petty cash account makes it a lot more realistic and accurate of what's actually happening in the business you have cash coming into petty cash and then being transferred to the bank account rather than just recording it as a receipt in the current account. But do whatever you think is best for your, your business. So the money's come into Petty Cash. We now want to transfer it. So it was 1873. The paying in slip was 500 508 on the 30th of the 5th. So highlight Petty Cash, click transfer. So from Petty Cash to the current account, NetWest. So it's the 30th of the 5th, 2013, and it was 500, 508, 500, 508, and the amount was 1873, let's click save, yes, very good. And then we have this last transaction, we have rent, premises B, direct debit. 
Now, you may have some recurring payments or receipts set up on Sage, like I went through on my basic Sage training course. If you click on recurring, we'll see that we have rent for premises B for 500. All we need to do is process this, and then it will show up on Sage as a posting. So let's just click process to the 31st of the 5th, 2013. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to tell us it's telling us it's going to process this one transaction rent for premises B 500. Click post. Click yes. And that's now posted. So that saves us a lot of time. These recurring payments are really good if you have regular standing orders, direct debits, and other payments and receipts that may go in out in and out of the bank regularly. So let's click reconcile. Click use saved. So it brings up our saved one from before. Our first transaction 273 from Stevenson. 273. There we go. Let's color that in green. Next up, we have 1873 paid in on slip 500 508. So 1873, it's a receipt. Here's a receipts column, the payments column. 500, 508 in the details. Yep. Let's color that in green. And then rental premises B, direct debit 500. Details, rental premises B, payment 500. Difference is zero. Everything's been matched. Our ending balance is 148727. 148727. That's what we like to see. So we can put a bit tick. We've reconciled the whole of May. Let's click reconcile. And there we go. Depending on the size of your business, there may be a lot more effort required than that. Sometimes you may have payments go in and out of the bank that are hard to identify what they are, especially if you have a number of directors and they all have cards um, from past experience. You know, they all go and spend money on things and don't keep receipts. So it can be a bit of investigation work. And also, if you are a fairly large business or company, your statements are going to be a lot bigger than what I've demonstrated in these videos. But that's the basic principle of bank reconciliations. Hopefully that has helped you a lot. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me, info at bpfs, that's bravo, papa, foxtrot, sierra, hyphen online.com. So info at bpfs hyphen online.com. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it.